señor ministro de Ganadería, Agricultura y Pesca del Uruguay, ingeniero agrónomo Tabaré Aguerre, señor presidente del GIFAR, profesor Monty Jones, señor presidente del SIDA, doctor Canario Nuance, señores participantes, señoras y señores amigos todos. Como presidente del consorcio del CGIR, que agrupa a los 15 centros de investigación agrícola internacional y también como copatrocinador junto a GIFAR de esta conferencia, tengo el placer en darles una muy cordial bienvenida al Uruguay y Punta del Este en particular. Desde hace más de 40 años, el CGIAR ha venido aportando soluciones a los, a los problemas de pobreza y seguridad alimentaria a nivel mundial a través de, de la investigación agrícola. Los resultados de estas investigaciones tuvieron un enorme impacto, como las innovaciones introducidas con variedades de alto rendimiento de trigo y arroz en las décadas de los 70 y 80, en lo que se conoció como la Revolución Verde, que impidieron una hambruna generalizada en el sur y sudeste de Asia. Which avoided a widespread famine in the southeast and south of Asia. In the 1980s, the innovations for the biological control of an insect, the mealybug, a uh, type of bug that had ravaged uh, yucca crops in Africa, enabled the reincorporation of this crop into the continent with benefits in the region of $4 billion dollars a year. Other results may be less known, perhaps, at a global level, but are equally important in terms of improving year to year the life of rural people that are among the less privileged in developing countries. For example, as a result of research into the improvement of varieties of food products, uh, currently 40% of the best uh, or improved varieties of the 10 main crops of uh, food worldwide uh, have originated in CGR innovations. It is estimated that the annual benefit of CGR research, as far as the three main cereals are concerned, rice, wheat, and maize, amount to 10.8, 2.5, and uh, 800 billion dollars, respectively. Recently, new varieties of uh, potatoes resistant to certain diseases have made it possible to triple the yields of this product in the region of Cusco in Peru. The introduction in Bangladesh and India of rice varieties that can survive fully uh, submerged under water for nearly three weeks, Cuba rice, have radically changed the income of farmers from two to seven or nine dollars a day with a visible impact on the quality of life. The situation of bush beans in Rwanda, which has been uh, replaced by improved species of climbing beans uh, through CGR, has more than trebled yields and turned this country into a uh, net exporter, uh, originally a subsistence farmer. In short, there are many results of uh, research and successful implementation of innovations with key effects on the quality of life of the neediest at the world level. But, uh, of course, time is short. Another feature of uh, CGR research that makes it uh, very much liked among donors is that it has enabled very high yields on the investments made. On average, for every dollar invested in research at our 15 centers, agricultural production has risen by nine dollars. The first conclusion is therefore that agricultural research has been and will continue to be an important part of the solution to the issues of poverty and food security worldwide. This has been stressed on different occasions since the food crisis in 2008 in all uh, fields of cooperation at the highest level internationally, including G20 countries as well as the main international organizations related to development, such as FAO, the World Bank, um, IFAD, uh, ICA, and ECLAC, which have made uh, agricultural research a priority instrument in fighting the adverse effects of volatility and the increase in the price of food as regards the most vulnerable. Despite the international recognition of the importance of the problem and of the progress made, agriculture in the 21st century faces a set of new complex and major challenges which require that we rethink the topic of agricultural research for development. It is first estimated that agricultural production will have to increase by 70% 
in order to meet the needs of a rising population which is estimated to reach 9 billion people in 2050. On the other hand, the MDGs for 2015 will only be achievable if we make a significant additional effort, considering that uh, even in 2012 over 850 million people suffer from hunger in the world, something which is fully unacceptable. Secondly, dietary changes related to the increase in income, uh, as estimated in developing countries, um, with a view to um, consuming more animal. With significant constraints in terms of natural resources, we shall witness increasing scarcity and more visible competition for the use of water in agriculture. We will experience additional deterioration of land and soil fertility. The extinction of many species of marine resources will increase uh, substantially. It is actually estimated that 65% of agricultural production increases will be through increases, increases in the productivity of land already being farmed, as there is little margin worldwide for new land to be incorporated into farming, except for countries in Latin America and Mercosur, specifically, and in Sub-Saharan Africa. Fourthly, one additional constraint as regards the increase of the supply and availability of food products will be the increasing competition as a result of the needs of the energy sector for the production of ethanol and biodiesel. We will also have to live with and face the problems related to higher price volatility as regards food and uh, the consequence of this for the poorest who currently spend over 70% of their income to get food and these situations may create dangerous social conflict and political crisis. Research will also have to address institutional problems, problems related to capacity, and will have to tackle policies to improve the income of the rural sectors, as the solution to the problem of food security does not lie only in higher food production, but mainly in the possibility of access to food. This lays bare the very close linkage between poverty and food security. Even in cases where there is adequate food availability, this may perhaps not give enough um, micronutrient inputs to the population, such as vitamin A or iron or zinc and iodine, which iodine, which may bring chronic diseases and even cause death, especially among the most vulnerable and children in particular. Hence. Great efforts are needed to link nutrition to agricultural research in order to tackle these problems. All this long list of challenges will be compounded by the impact of climate change with the increases in temperature, the variations in the usual patterns of rainfall, droughts, and greater floods with geographical changes in the appearance and distribution of pests and diseases. Let's not fool ourselves. Climate change will have a significant impact on agricultural production in the future, and there is still no consensus-based response at the international level. In order to meet these challenges and adapt to these new realities, CGR in the last three years has undergone a profound reform which I have been honored to lead and which includes not only important institutional and governance aspects but also new approaches to our scientific work as well as new operational methods to do research. I shall have a chance to refer to them in detail tomorrow during the plenary. However, it is worth noting at this point that uh, today research is um, focusing on development, addressing the specific needs identified through their main recipients. In particular, CGR research uh, aims at four systemic results. Rural poverty reduction, the improvement of food security, the improvement of nutrition and health, and finally, sustainable management of natural resources. We have devised a common strategy for all centers, which is a major change as compared to the independent actions by the 15 centers in the past. There is a change in the research focus, the main axis being the uh, consortium programs known as CRPs in their English acronym, which combine collective actions of the centers rather than 
individual agricultural research agendas. We have achieved common governance of CGR through the consortium, which now represents with one voice and speaks with one voice. We are funding these programs by harmonizing the uh, funders through the Fund Council. A key pillar of the new strategy, and this is important for this meeting, is the role and function of the partnerships with different actors in order for the results to be there and be adopted by farmers. The results are measured by their impact in the field relative to the four aims pointed out. We have designed a special strategy that looks at the role of women in agriculture, women accounting for 43% of the workforce in agriculture worldwide. Our aim is to double investment in international agricultural research over the next five years. Despite the world financial crisis, in 2012, we hope to have over $850 million. So there has been an increase in recent years. In short, all our efforts are aimed at high-quality research in line with the challenges we're facing in order to achieve more efficiency, to make it more effective and responsible and accountable for the results obtained. We now have 15 programs approved by the Funders Council, most of which are already in the implementation stage, and they include a vast range of topics aimed at improving the lives of the poorest and most vulnerable including research into the genetic improvement of multiple crops, leading to varieties that remain highly productive when faced with climate pressures such as drought, floods, salinity, as well as uh, a large number of pests and diseases. We're extending the traditional research around the three main crops, uh, wheat, maize, and rice, and including other essential products for food security in developing countries, such as potatoes, cubes, bananas, animals, uh, fish, cereals from arid zones like sorghum and millet, and a wide range of legumes. We're incorporating specific uh, programs of research on afforestation, policies, institutions, markets, and climate change. We also include research that leads to varieties with a much more nutritional value as compared to traditional varieties, with benefits in terms of the health of both farmers and consumers. We're incorporating improvements in water and soil management to improve yields and resilience. Other research areas cover post-harvest losses, public policies and investments, as well as improvements in access to markets and food safety. I would like to conclude, I've already gone on for too long, by stressing the importance of a conference such as this for our organization. GICAR 2 brings together all those involved in the agri-food chain, all the way from researchers to the farmers who use the results and the uh, end consumer that uh, consumes the product. We have represented here not only the scientists that do agricultural research internationally, regionally, and uh, nationally through the international and, uh, um, and research institutes, but also international organizations, regional organizations, universities, NGOs, civil society, farmers associations, um, government authorities, foundations, the private sector, key investors and funders of the agricultural sector. All these are the actors that we need in order to achieve the transformation we need in research for development. During the course of this week, all CGR programs, as well as the strategy, will be subject to consideration and discussion by all those attending. We'll be hearing about the areas where there's room for improvement, adjustment, complementation, and greater synergies with other initiatives already underway. We will look at ways to strengthen partnerships with different actors in order to achieve a greater impact in the field. We will also seek greater harmonization between international research and um, domestic and regional research and investment programs already underway, such as is already the case with FAR in Africa, and we intend to do in Latin America and the Caribbean with the collaboration of ICA. GCAR 2 is therefore an important platform in, or platform in order to coordinate efforts on a global scale and for mutual support of different initiatives in agricultural research to achieve efficiency improvements, avoid duplication, and have a greater impact on the complex challenges we face in terms of poverty, malnutrition, and rural development. Again, a warm welcome to Uruguay. I thank 
the over 700 participants, and I would particularly like to thank the Minister of Agriculture for joining us this evening, and I wish you the best of success. Thank you very much.